You never know when you're gonna need assistance out on the water, but here in the US, we're pretty fortunate. We got the boys in orange who are almost always willing to get out there, risk their lives to help boaters in distress. Kind of like we see here, except this one's a little different. And those of you who are in the know, your boy BG needs a little explanation on this one. This video right here is categorized as a heavy weather escort where the boys in orange are escorting a sailing vessel out of one of the most dangerous inlets in the United States, Oregon Inlet, right off the outer banks of North Carolina. Now the conditions described in this video are described as being eight foot seas as these vessels try and navigate the inlet. But what in the world is a heavy weather escort and how do you get one? So those of you guys in the know, I'm just curious, is this something typical for the Coast Guard to do? Is it something you request, something maybe you have to pay for? Or did this boat just happen to catch a day where the boys were out there doing some training and they decided to follow them? If you know the answer to that question, let me know in the comments below. But welcome back guys to this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. Our first story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Taiwan, where this was the scene this past week, when the HMM box ship Hyundai Tokyo was arriving in a Taiwanese port, when it was assigned a pilot as usual to come on board the vessel and direct it into its dock. Shortly after clearing the breakwater though, alarms went off in the Taiwanese Port Authority office alerting them that the vessel was exceeding safe speeds in the harbor. Quickly, the Port Authority tried to get a hold of the captain multiple times but could not raise him on the radio, and then all of a sudden, the unthinkable happened. The vessel went straight on in, bow first, directly into the concrete reinforced dock that it was trying to arrive at. Taiwan's Port Authority officials quickly boarded the vessel to try and determine what happened. Crew on board the vessel told officials that immediately upon arriving on the ship, they noticed that the pilot reeked of alcohol, so quickly they went into action to try and give him a breathalyzer test. The breathalyzer did confirm that the pilot was intoxicated beyond the legal limit. He did claim he had not been drinking that day, but had been out drinking most of the night prior to arriving to his 6am shift. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to Australia, where this was the scene a few weeks back during the Australia Sail Grand Prix, when a Great Britain crew member was swept overboard from his catamaran during the race. Matt Cottrell claims he was doing a very basic maneuver during this event, but one misstep puts him in the drink. I got up and got to the wing, and the next thing I knew I was kind of falling backwards and I was in the water pretty quick. I just wanted to get back on and finish the race. Fortunately, due to the quick efforts of Matt's teammates, they were able to get him quickly back on the vessel. He only had some minor scuffs and bruises and was able to continue on. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us over to the Quezal Bank, located in the southwestern tip of the Bahamas, not far off the coast of Cuba, where we've got a site that's not become all that uncommon here on the boating news, where the Coast Guard was sent to an abandoned island after hearing stories of possible refugees being stranded on the island after leaving Cuba in a vessel that wasn't quite seaworthy. Upon arrival, the Coast Guard did send one of its team members onto the shore to make sure that everybody was okay. He did wind up assisting one young lady back onto the vessel. The Coast Guard was able to successfully pull everybody off the island and transfer them over to Bohemian authorities. The Quezal Bank is a very remote area, and this crew really was pretty lucky they were discovered in this one. Even though the Quezal Bank is considered the Bahamas, it's actually significantly closer to Cuba than it is any of the main Bohemian islands, which makes a lot of the small islands on this bank uninhabited. Our next story to make the boating news this week is going to take us to the coast of Florida, where this was a story that actually broke several weeks back when a celebrity cruise ship was returning to Florida when all of a sudden the chief officer on the deck spotted something glimmering off in the distance. When they pulled the binoculars out, they spotted a vessel with 19 people on board in distress. The captain of the cruise line quickly alerted her crew to get ready to try and bring the people on board. They turned the large cruise ship around and did a reciprocal course back to the vessel and then pulled alongside the vessel to try and protect it from the rough seas as her crew jumped into action to go ahead and pull the people off the derelict ship and onto the cruise. Fortunately, the crew was able to pull all 19 people on the cruise ship without any injuries. Once on board, they were all given warm clothes, food, a place to lay their head if they would like, and many of them were actually even able to call back to their home countries and let loved ones know that they were okay. But this, once again, is another common scene. This is the third such incident we've seen of a cruise ship rescuing people in the last several weeks. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's episode of Boating News of the Week. If you ever see anything crazy happening out on your waterways, be sure to hit us up on Facebook or Instagram and let us know and you might see your stories over here. Just like 608 Fishing 1, Captain Kate McHugh and Wisco Fishing did this week. And if you guys haven't already, go ahead and drop an anchor on the subscribe button here. If not, we're coming to steal your drain plug.